Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian. Today I have stolen the Telerian Community College background. I didn't even get permission. I literally just I literally just stole it. I'm not even at his place. I just stole this because he is one of the most amazing, influential MTG content creators here on YouTube. So I figured I want to be just like him. I wish my hair was, was half as long as his. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm growing it out. It's getting longer on top. It's not quite there yet, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. Anyhow, let's jump into what I'm doing. So, what, why am I here? What's going on? This isn't a magic video. Well, it is a magic video, sort of. I'm doing something else because I've talked uh, lately about uh, switching it up on the channel a bit. I figured uh, you guys should see more of my face and do more videos of me doing me, I guess. So today we are doing a Q&A video. It's gonna call this segment called "Let's Talk Magic with Adrian from Giant Monster Games" as I steal people's backgrounds today. Tolarian Community College. If you want to go check out Tolarian Community College, if for some reason you've been living under a rock, um, then I will put a link. He's like right on top of the link description here. You can actually go check him out because he's super awesome. Anyways, let's get into it. I have a bunch of videos, a bunch of questions, a bunch of videos. I have a bunch of questions I have prepared from you guys. So Michael is asking, are you really purposely throwing in the mood or uh, to be with the theme with the deck or... Sorry, I'm not just reading as... Reading's not my, my strongest point. Ever. Um, nice method acting. If not, maybe top shelf the deck. So this was actually in response, by the way. I got a whole bunch of these. I got like 30, 40 comments like this. Like legitimately 30, 40 comments about the, the negative counters deck because I was super salty, like over seasoned to the max with that video because I, uh, when I was having a bad day when I started recording all those videos. So that's like, okay, I need to record all of my gameplay on the one day. And I was in a bad mood. I just didn't sleep very well. Yada, yada, yada things. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to make. I'm going to make the negative counters deck a whole bunch of really negative videos where I'm just grouchy and salty and I'm angry at the world. Um, and one of the videos, I, I did get really angry. Um, and I literally was just dropping F-bombs nonstop. And uh, I mean, to be honest, I am... I am getting a little bit burnt out from just like constantly churning out a new budget deck every single week, so I am swapping it up. We're trying something else. Uh, one of the things I did try with all this is I actually tried doing some mobile gaming, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, but one of the other things is we're going to be doing something like this, where we do Let's Talk Magic, where I answer a bunch of questions so you guys can leave comments in the description below this video. And um, I will answer it in a couple of weeks when I do the next one of these videos. We'll also maybe have more specific topics. Question number two, we have from every third comment, um, I'd like to point out that your miscommunications, mispronunciations, slash insert long ass list of words I can't pronounce. So, um, literally every third, fourth, maybe every third, I mean, being a little bit um, dramatic here, if you will, uh, probably every fifth. Probably every fifth comment on videos is, hey, you mispronounced this, or hey, you didn't read this, or you're saying this card name wrong. Uh, this is a byproduct of a thing called dyslexia, um, where I don't have the ability to read properly, I don't have the ability to spell properly, and my mispronunciations of stuff is just a byproduct of me trying to do my best. So, um, to all the people out there that are saying, hey, you can't pronounce this word, please realize that you are literally making fun of someone's handicapped. So, uh, thanks for that. Um, it's a great way of boosting my self-esteem. So, dyslexia is a thing. Uh, if you don't know much about it, go look it up. It sucks, um, for the record. Okay, also, by the way, the dyslexia thing goes back to why when I do live streams, I like have a really hard time reading comments because I try to read quickly and then they get messed up and I jumble words and then words look like other words and yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, Tuckerman says, Tron and Lantern Control players are for simple-minded pussies. I don't agree at all. Um, I am not a giant fan of Tron or Lantern Control, uh, but I... I don't think they're for simple-minded pussies. I believe they're for people that don't want a lot of friends and want to control and just win a lot. I actually really enjoy playing Tron, even though I hate playing against it. So there's that. I <laughs> I don't agree with you, but thank you for leaving your comment, Taco Man. Comment number four. We have the squirrel plane, uh, which is, I'm assuming, a plane full of squirrels. Like, just everyone. There's like squir elven squirrels and, and orc squirrels and uh, you mean all the planeswalkers are squirrels? I'm, I'm interested in seeing the squirrel plane now. I really, really want to see it. Anyways, have you ever tried EDH? Yes, I do have a number of EDH decks in paper. I haven't actually played any on MTGO. Um, I might be doing some of that in the near future. I do have a in the works. We'll see if it actually comes to fruition in the next um, three, four, five weeks. Um, a collab that involves uh, EDH. So hopefully... Fingers crossed this will come through and you guys will get to see me play some awesome EDH with some other cool people. I bring this up so I can actually sit up straight rather than having to like lean over into the mic a whole bunch here. 
Okay, question number five. Just carrying through this, uh, Jared asks, why you know MTG? And this is a response to a new channel which I have created called Giant Monster Games Mobile. Because I decided, hey, I want to try to do some mobile gaming. I do a lot of mobile gaming. It's actually like my second passion. Maybe third passion. Maybe my first passion. It's a passion of mine. Many passions I have. Um, so many that it's hard to count sometimes. That's what happens when you're the most passionate man in the entire world. Myself. No, um, Giant Mobile Games, Giant Monster Games Mobile is another channel if you guys are interested in seeing me doing more mobile gaming stuff because I want to. I don't want to just do magic all the time anymore. I'm going to branch out. We're going to do other stuff. And instead of putting mobile gaming here on the channel because I know you guys want to see more magic content. That's literally why you subscribed. So why take magic content away from you guys when I can just take mobile gaming to somewhere else? So this is literally the plan. There is a new channel. You can actually go subscribe. It's again in the description below, right below uh, Telerian Community College. Uh, it's called Giant Monster Games Mobile, and I am uploading mobile games there. Uh, those videos currently are sporadic. I'm going to try for like twice a week, but eventually I would like to get to that to the point where I have a backlog, and I'm doing videos every single day on that channel, where it'll be a new video every single day, and we'll be doing a couple different series, plus trying out other games, largely because making mobile games and mo mobile game videos is a million times easier and faster faster than making magic content, which is one of the reasons why I want to be doing it. So that is a thing, Giant Monster Games Mobile. You can go and subscribe to that if you want. If you want to see more of my ugly face, talking about other stuff, not just magic. Question number six, Captain, the Captain, Captain Hindsight, um, which is kind of like Captain Obvious, except he realized it after the fact that it was obvious, and it's it's in hindsight, I guess. Um, since we will return to Ravnica in the fall, those Shocklands will possibly come down um, being reprinted. So, my the biggest thing I have, uh, my, my biggest frustration with magic, I don't often complain about magic. But maybe that's a lie. Maybe I complain all the time. Maybe I'm known for complaining. Maybe that's Maybe that should be the way I go. Maybe from now on it's going to be salt every video complaining nonstop. Anyways, one of my biggest problems with magic, actually specifically with modern and legacy, is getting into those decks is unreasonably expensive almost entirely because of the land package. When you have to be dropping 15 to 20 dollars per land for approximately I'm going to go with 18 of your lands are 15 to 20 dollars. It's just not it's not reasonable. It's absolutely not reasonable. So, in my personal opinion, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish they would consistently reprint the fetch lands and the shock lands and the fast lands, the new ones that came out in Kaladesh. I wish they would re reprint more of these because they're something that we really need in order to play competitive magic decks. And it's one of the things that a lot of the budget decks actually suffer from. There's a lot of ones I build where the deck itself works very well, but the mana base makes it inconsistent and it just loses to itself one in you know, one in five games, one in six games. And if you are making a three-color deck, you need to play them. You can't not play them. So, I agree. Captain, hopefully you are right. I really, really hope they reprint all of the fetch lands. Um, or at least all the shock lands, sorry. All the shock lands in uh, Return to Ravnica, because that would be really good. Or returning again, once again, to going back going back to Ravnica uh, once again. Like, we, we, we forgot our keys, and we need to go back to Ravnica one more time, because we're currently locked out of the house. Ravnica. Uh, question number seven was, I'm not, I'm not going to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Starts with a G, second name starts with a T. That's all that matters to me. Uh, please make a video about how you build your budget decks. So uh, I'm going to do, I'll do a video down the road. I'll do it at some point when I get around to it or feel the deep burning passion like all the rest of my things. Uh, I will make a video about how I actually build my decks. But I want you to know, um, well, one, Saffron Olive uh, did an amazing, 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 amazing video on how he builds decks, whether it's a top-down or a bottom-up build, um, which is, I mean, a lot of times I use that. If I am building decks, that's kind of the way I do it. But there's a third way I actually do it, and this is actually uh, one of the more common ways I actually go with building decks. Um, and this is just a kind of quick note for you guys. This isn't a super in-depth video here. I'm not going to show you anything other than myself on the screen, which is annoying. Um, the other way I do it is actually go and look for other decks that exist. Normally I'm looking at decks that have top aided or decks that are really competitive. And I go through that deck and I say, well, what's in here? What is making it work? What is making it function? Um, the Soul Flare deck, which was recently, um, which I really like that deck for the record. Um, that deck is actually one of the ones I found that it actually had made it to a top eight somewhere. Um, the deck, there's you know a list that was floating around and said, oh, wow, this is actually 
surprisingly competitive, and most of the cards in this de deck that need to be here are not really that expensive. Like, Soul Flare himself is like a dollar, and a lot of the other cards that you need are a dollar. There's a handful of cards that were maybe five or six or ten dollars. I just cut all those guys and then found replacements that are good budget replacements for those. So this is what I do normally a lot of the times, and that's why certain decks, like, people are like, hey, I want you to make a Jund deck. Jund just can't be made on the same kind of budget. All the cards, the cards you need to make that deck really efficient and really hit home, they're none of them are budget. So it's really hard to say, well, we can take a pre existing top eight deck, cut out 50% of the cards, not including the land, so 50% of the other cards, and find decent enough replacements. This is how I approach stuff. A lot of the, the Elves deck, the Soul Sisters deck, a lot of these decks that are already named decks, like Burn, um, another perfect example. This is literally what I did. This is how I went about building them. So if you want to try in my method, um, go take a look at decks that are out there that you think are interesting, that you see running around top eight. Say, hey, can I build this? What cards need to be in this deck to make this deck work? And then take out the ones that are too expensive and uh, try and find good replacements for them that are budget worthy. Um, by the way, not all the times you can go one for one. There's some times where it's just like, oh, you can't just replace this with a shittier version of it. It doesn't always work that way. But it is kind of how I go about doing it sometimes. Not all the times. I'd say this is probably like a 30% of the time that's how I go about doing it. Uh, other times, if I'm building another Goblins deck, by the way, if I'm building like a Goblins deck that I want to be a Goblins deck, I'm not going to go look at Goblins that exist in the current meta or Merfolk that exist in the current meta because all of the cards that make that deck function are not really cheap or budget. So I start looking at a bottom-up, how do I actually make a Merfolk deck that still functions as a Merfolk deck, feels like a Merfolk deck, looks and acts and talks and sounds like a Merfolk deck, but is not the Merfolk deck. Uh, ironically, I'm talking about Merfolk and I'm sitting in the Tolarian Community College uh, background. Um, coincidence? I think not. Conspiracy? Most definitely. And the last question I have, question number eight, because this deck, this video is not going to be super long, because it's already like 11 minutes. I'm already like at 12 minutes here. Wow. Okay, and the last uh, last question I have is uh, from M. Pakakane. I'm, I'm going to help. That's how I pronounce it. I am a complete beginner at MTG. What is a good deck? Modern is a good format for starting. So... Uh, to, I'm going to answer the second question first, and I'll go back to the first one. So, uh, is Modern a good format if you're just starting out in Magic? Uh, the short answer is not really. Um, if you're just starting out Magic like you've never really played before, Modern's not a fun format to jump into right away. If you have been playing Magic for more than a couple months, I think Modern's a very good format to get into. Because there's a lot of very fun, interesting, and versatile decks that you can take out, as long as you're not playing at a super competitive store, you can take out and actually have fun and do reasonably well, assuming you, you've practiced with it, because that's one of the biggest things about playing decks. You need to practice with them, otherwise uh, it's not always easy to do well. <laughs> it's a fun fact about Magic the Gathering. Practice means you get better. Um, so, if you're just beginning, if it's like you just started playing Magic like two weeks ago, mm, don't go into Modern. I actually recommend don't go into Standard either, to be quite honest. I would highly, highly recommend play Kitchen Table Magic. Build decks that are just janky whatever and learn the mechanics, learn what's fun. Uh, a lot of people say get into EDH, which EDH can be fun if you're playing, again, kitchen table EDH, not competitive EDH, which I have a lot of friends that play at competitive EDH, which is fun if you've been playing Magic for a while. If you're not, it's, it's like, hey, look at me, I combo and I explode and I'm amazing and I'm done and I win the game, which is not fun for new players. New players, in my experience, from being a new player at one point, um, <laughs> It's like, yeah, I was in grade four, so 15, 20 years ago now? A long time ago. A very long time ago. Um, yes, what am I talking about? New players want to play and have fun and learn the mechanics and learn, oh, cool, look at this, I got these cool things. And theme is more important and having fun is more important than winning on turn four, winning on turn five. So modern's not good if you're just starting. If you are in two or three months and you've been playing regularly, you're playing every week, Modern's a lot better. And then, as far as uh, I'm a competitor begin beginning to... <laughs> I'm a complete beginner at Magic. What's a good deck? Um, decks that are really good are decks that have a quite linear path. As soon as you get into decks that need a lot of interaction, so we're talking like Eldrazi and Taxes, we're talking any control deck, uh, it becomes a, l a lot more difficult if you're new at Magic. It's a lot easier to be the aggro deck, so it's a lot easier to be playing Goblins or Merfolks in a lot of cases, where you are putting stuff on the table and swinging for faces, which is why the Hydra's deck that I put out a while ago is actually really good for new players because it's super straightforward. Uh, you're not trying to counter stuff, you're not trying to do combat tricks, you're not like, you don't have a solid game plan. Your game plan is 
put Hydras into play, make Hydras bigger, make Hydras attack people's faces. That is, that is like the key line of play. And if you're getting a new deck, going for an aggro type deck. So Burn, Hydras on my channel are two really good ones um, that I would highly recommend. Soul Sisters as well, because Soul Sisters also is like, hey, look, I'm doing this. This is how I need to be doing this. These are decks that I would recommend if you are just beginning or if you're trying to get someone into playing Magic, specifically Modern. These are the decks that you want to be going into first. Once you get into playing Magic, playing combo, playing more like mid-range interactive decks like Jund or like Grixis, they become way more interesting, way fun, way more fun because you know what you're expecting, you know what you need to be doing, and you want to be in the control world. Except for me, I hate control. Um, I would rather play combo, which means you need to be doing X, Y, and Z, and then what's your opponent doing, that they can be able to counter your stuff, so on and so forth. So yes, um, that's a really long-winded answer for um, should you get into playing modern if you're a new player and what deck is good. So that's the long and short. Anyways, this has been Let's Talk Magic. I'm literally just answering questions in this video, but down the road I might actually have an actual subject that I wish to talk about other than uh, announcing that I'm going to be putting mobile gaming on a whole different channel, which you can go to and subscribe now, which uh, I'll even put this back up here. Hey, check that out. Ooh, bye. It's out of here. Bye. That's amazing. Um, yes. Anyways, my name, this is Adrian. Um, this is Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian. That's what I'm trying to say. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to game like Talarian Community College because I have his background once again. Thanks for watching the videos here on Giant Monster Games. If you want to support the channel directly, we now have a Patreon page which you can go and become part of the broader Giant Monster Games community. Additionally, if you want to see some other awesome videos, you can click right here or right here.